good looking. Hey. Oh. What's with all the snack type comestible? My study group. Oh, that's right. We are cramming for a psychology quiz. Yeah, well, no fair having more fun than me. <laughs> yeah. Pavlov and his slobbering dogs are a laugh riot. Yeah? How goes the paper chase anyway? Huh? Well, let's put it this way. Yesterday, I quizzed Junior on his fractions. And today, I am uh, demystifying the human psyche. I'm using muscles in my brain I never thought existed. Ooh, that's my cue. Oh. Allow me. Oh. Oh. Kids asleep? Oh, yeah, hours ago. Mm. Oh. How was the banquet? You were better off with Pavlov's dogs. You know the really amazing thing about it? The entire time I was up on that dais, sweating to death in this monkey suit, I kept thinking to myself, who the hell is Tad Martin, and why is he droning on about champagne grapes anyway? Oh, honey, you just had a bad night. You know, one night, that happens. Yeah. On the upside, I met this ancient rancher from Sonoma. He said he'd known a Nolo, you know, for years, all the way back from when she started the Orsini Vineyard. It's incredible, you know, one minute he was talking about her, the next thing you know, he's got tears in his eye. Of course, that started me going, and next thing you know, we got these two grown men standing around in penguin suits crying about what a great woman Nola was. Mm. Sure do miss her. Oh. Orsini's just not the same without her, you know? Yeah, well... You know, you've done a lot for the vineyard. Well... It was all a lot more fun when Nola was around. You know, if it stops being fun, maybe it's time for you to ask yourself if it's worth it. And maybe if you're not losing more than you're getting. Sweetheart, I owe everything I am to Orsini. Almost everything. Oh, yeah, that's right. I could have been an itinerant farm worker in Salinas or a, a bum on Cannery Row. Don't kid yourself. Nola took me off the street and turned my life around. She gave me a purpose, a vision, and somebody I could be proud of when I grew up. I'm proud of you. Well, because of what Nola gave me. In case you haven't forgotten, vintage Thaddeus wasn't mobile material. Honey, you know, I would be proud of you if you were an itinerant farm worker or a beach bum. The thing is, is that, you know, we miss you. You know, Junior and Jamie and I, you're so busy all of the time. You're always gone. And poor Jamie, he's got to make an appointment with you, practically, to have some sort of quality time know, with his dad three know, weeks sweetie, in advance. I can't help it. I'm spread thin. There's nothing I can do about it. I mean, after all, Erica's nationwide tour kicks off tomorrow. I got power suits pressed and ready to go from here to Napa. I just wish Nola was around to see how much Orsini has grown. You know what I wish? I wish that she could be here and hold her grandson. And to see how great you are, Junior and Jamie. Nola just wanted you to be happy. That was her dream for you. Hello? Dixie, hey, it's Dell. Oh, hi, honey, where are you? I'm in Pine Valley. Our flight just arrived. How is Florida? It's been a sad couple of days. Dr. How's um, Kendall doing? Oh, she's, she's pretty tore up. Mm. Well, listen, why don't you just stay put? Uh, Tad and I'll come and pick you up. Oh, no, you can't leave the kids. No, it's, okay. it's okay. Petra is here. She's going to spend the night. It's late, though. No, just stay put. Tad and I will be there soon to pick you up. Okay, honey? Okay, bye. Now, before you start saying anything, before you start yelling at me, Dale is my brother. He and Kendall have been through a very difficult time, and I don't think people in mourning should have to go to the baggage claim and have to go pick up a taxi in the middle of the night. Now, mad at me. No, I'm not mad at you. How could I possibly be mad? You're just being you. Sweet, wonderful, generous you. There's Tad and Dixie. Hi, Del. Look who here. Hi. Oh, it's good to see you. Oh, good to see you. 
What, what are you guys doing here? Well, we thought a ride home with some friends would be the daredevil cab drive with a stinky old cab driver. Yeah, <laughs> Martin Livery. Curb to curb service. Hell, I'm even dressed for the job. I'm awfully sorry to hear about your dad. I am too. And, um, did your mom get our flowers? Yes, they were beautiful. Thank you. You know, I really, um, I'm not very good at this. I don't exactly know what to say, but, um, I'm sure it's pretty depressing um, to think about going back to the pine cone to stay. So Tad and I thought that maybe you'd like to come back to our house and stay with us for a little while. No, I don't want to impose. No, it's not a problem at all. Really, we have tons of room. No, that's a lot of trouble. No, it's not. But it'll make you feel better. We'll put you to work. Cleaning dishes, scrubbing floor. <laughs> come on, help me with the bag. I've got some stuff for sandwiches. Not for me, thanks. Honey, you hadn't eaten since breakfast. I'm not really hungry. You know, when my mama passed, I, I didn't want to eat a thing either. I just, my heart was so broken, it was just impossible. We don't have to talk about this. No, it's okay. I think it hurts more not to talk about it. My dad's death was just so sudden. That, I mean, one minute he was here, and the next he was gone. The way it was with my sister Jenny, I had a hard time adjusting for quite a long time. The fact that she was gone didn't seem real. That's the way it is, you know? I mean, for a while, you walk around in this kind of numb fog, but that goes away. And then you think about all the things that you didn't say, like, um, I'm sorry, and I love you, and, and then that passes, too. And then you get, well, at least for me, in my experience, I, I, I got a sign. And, um, like, after Will died, uh, I was opening up a book, and I saw his name right there. It just sort of popped out at me. And Junior, he said, um, I love you, Mom. And I could have sworn that I had just heard Will. Nothing can separate a family. Not even death. I'd like very much to believe that. Right now, I don't even know what I believe. I don't even know if I'm going to stay in Pine Valley. Well, honey, you don't have to decide anything tonight. You need some rest. I don't think I could sleep. You know, after, um, after my mom died, I didn't want to sleep because I didn't want to dream. I didn't want to feel all the pain, you know, by remembering her. But then this wonderful thing happened. I began to dream about her, and it was like a wonderful visitation from an old friend. And uh, she sort of stayed with me the whole day. I hope you have sweet dreams, Kendall. I'm serious. You pulled off a minor miracle just now. 
and handed it to her gift wrap. Look, I just didn't want her to feel like she's alone. Oh, you did a lot more than that, honey. You made her feel at home. Like she belonged here. Well, I did it for Del. Because he obviously loves her. for the old ego. Would you give me that? Wait, wait. Come wait. on, sweetie. You can't memorize the whole damn book. Just do what I used to do. Put it under your pillow. Your brain will suck it up overnight. No, I am not a sponge. I am a freshman with a bad case of testitis. Oh, you know, I actually dreamt last night that I, I slept through the exam. That's a very common dream. Like the one where you're naked in front of the class. Speaking of which... Class is in session. Oh, honey, no, look, come on, come on, come on. Let me just put on my nightgown, okay? No, 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 don't, 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 don't. Please, just, just, just leave the t-shirt on. I kind of like this. You do? Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. Well, I should take you to the student store. Oh, no, no, I'll, I'll get you a catalog. How about no, that? No, I don't want a catalog. Got my very own beautiful co-ed right here. This reminds me, I can't remember the last time I matriculated with a freshman. Oh, well, I can't remember the last time I uh, made love to somebody who had a name tag stuck to their left pack. Thank you. Did I hurt you? Oh, excuse me, thank you. I'm gonna get up to you. Mm, this is getting better. I'm just a little lower. Oh, bingo. Oh. <laughs> Come here. What? Listen, put that away, all right? No. You put it away. Oh. Come on. Listen, I hope you, you know that it doesn't matter to me one way or the other. What? Whether or not you're an A student. As far as I'm concerned, you're already on the honor roll. Which reminds me. What? Where you go? Oh, I got you. You certainly do. <laughs> I thought I'd stash the porcelain just in case Kendall gets any ideas. Never, to, never know. Tomorrow we could wake up and be brother and sister. Oh. Switched at birth. <laughs> you are so mean. And you are perfect. Oh. And I want you to know, mm. I don't give a damn whether or not you graduate with honors. For me, it's just an honor being married to you. Shut up and kiss me, <laughs> silly. <laughs> Yoo-hoo! Anybody up in us chickens? Who is the father of modern psychiatry? Kendall? No, but thank you for playing. The correct answer is Sigmund Freud. Morning, Cecily. Why don't you pick up your jaw and join us? <clears throat> well, looks like everyone's here but Juan Valdez. <laughs> Hi. Oh, thank you. Cecily. So, uh, where's the hidden camera? <laughs> Such a kidder. <laughs> mm. So, no complaints about the room? The room? Really, it was wonderful. Yeah, well, there's a draft comes under that door. If you want, we can move you further down the hall to Junior. What, you're taking in boarders? No, actually, Kendall is our house guest. Here, why don't you partake of a croissant? Thank you. Morning, everybody. Morning. Morning. <gasps> okay. What movie is this, and what happened to the first two reels? Why don't I explain? Um, my father just passed away, and Dal and I went home for the funeral, and Tad and Bixie were nice enough to let me stay here while I try and figure out what to do with my life. I'm sorry to hear about your dad. Why don't you say something? So, um, are you, um, any clearer about what you're gonna do? Actually, I am. Dal was right. Things do look a lot different and clearer in the morning. My life in Pine Valley has finally come into focus. Thanks to my new friends. <coughs> well, I see that right now is really not the best time for an impromptu study session. Right. Uh, I'll meet you at the student union, okay? Excellent. 
I'm, I'm really sorry to hear about what happened, and I hope things get better for you. Thank you. Listen, um, Tad and I will, uh, we'll, we'll see you out, okay? Lovely. Yes, lovely. Yes, come on. Let's see uh, Cecily out. Oh, right. Uh, um... Tom. Tonight, when the Taylor's house guest has a dilemma, he goes looking for advice from an older brother type. Problem is, his older brother is Tim. It's home improvement. Then, Hayden's agent gets him an offer to coach a professional football team. It's a dream come true, but keeping it a secret could become a nightmare on Coach. Now, stay tuned for One Life to Live, next.